The film begins by showing us a young boy named Thomas Dunn watching a heroic movie with his fellow brother. The hero in the movie seems to be saving the world from an alien invasion, and Thomas is obsessed with the man's superpowers. He is a half-man and a half-robot. Later that day, we see the young Thomas playing with his friend. He mimics the hero's act and tries to impersonate saving the world along with his fellow friends. When done, Thomas and his brother head into their house and find their dad in the garage. Young Thomas is close with his dad, and his dad believes in him. He gave him a bracelet to keep until later, and he proceeded to fix the car he was fixing. There was an oil leak underneath, so the kids left him to his task. The scene then shifts to years later, when the young Thomas is now fully grown and married to his wife, Mandy. She is a teacher at an elementary school. She is now finding out that she is pregnant from the urine test. She hasn't told her husband yet. Meanwhile, we see Thomas keeping the bracelet his father gave him and putting it on. Later, before Thomas leaves for work, Mandy tells him she has a baby inside of her, which is a surprise to Tom, who kisses her in happiness. It turns out the two used to have a kid named Rebecca, but unfortunately, she died. It is revealed the couple has lost faith in anything after that, and this is the only thing that sparkled their hopes. After leaving the house, Mandy goes to her school, and Tom heads to the cemetery to visit his deceased daughter. While he is there, he sees different planes passing over the sky but he doesn't pay much attention. Shortly, the father who helped the family through the tough times arrives. Tom then tells him Mandy is pregnant, and maybe this time they could actually live happily. The father is happy for him, but suddenly and abruptly, Tom feels chills over his body, and he turns around to see around him. He only sees a woman crying nearby at the cemetery, but soon he sees an apocalyptic vision in front of him that depicts the rest of the city being destroyed. In the meantime, Manny is also in the class when all the students see the same apocalyptic scene and the skies change rapidly. They didn't see much of the destruction except the skies, so they were not as disturbed. Back at the cemetery, the vision immediately stops and Tom realizes it was a vision he was only able to see. The woman who was crying hasn't seen anything, but the father with him seems to be disturbed by what he has just seen. He rushes and heads straight to the church where he repents under the portrait of the Lord. Back at the school, the kids cry in fear, and Mandy calms them down and tries to ease the air. However, her assistant and friend in the class haven't seen anything and are confused when the kids cry. Soon after, Tom goes to work. He works in a mental institution, and he is a doctor. His assistant welcomes him, and he visits the patients. He first came across Harriet, who has difficulties with past trauma. She is not disturbed or screams, but she is definitely having problems with trust issues. Second, Tom sees a schizophrenic patient named Floyd, who comes and points a banana at them, mimicking a gun. Tom calms him down and leads him to the TV room. There, he eats the banana and starts to watch the animation on the TV. In another room, Tom finds Claire, a drug addict and art enthusiast. He sees her recent painting, and it most likely depicts an explosion that is apocalyptic in nature. He asks her what it is, but she refuses to be communicated with. Later in the day, Tragic news was announced on TV. Several people were claiming to have seen the apocalyptic vision in the morning. However, it was just a few people who gave the testimonials, and not everybody has seen them. In the meantime, the previous patient we just met was in the room, and Claire took out her painting and gave it to Tom. She claimed to have prophesied the incident without really knowing it. Shortly after, Tom doesn't like how things are turning out, so he calls Mandy to tell her maybe they should go out of the city for a little while. But in the meantime, Mandy was looking at the drawings the kids have made, and most of them are apocalyptic in nature. She rushes outside as the phone is ringing, and it is unnoticed by her. Back at the hospital, Tom sees people watching an invisible spaceship appear out in the sky, so he rushes the patients to escape the compound and find refuge. As they were rushing out of the exit, a spaceship came towards them and started shooting at them out of nowhere. They ran down the stairs to escape from it, but they found themselves at a dead end. The spaceship successfully shoots at all of them except Thomas. The spaceship seems to be keeping the victims in a shell that is attached to the spaceship. It turns out the shot was not fire, but a ray that's able to abduct the intended human being. Tom finally gets seized and taken into one of the shells. The spaceship then accelerates to space, and we see the ship delivering humans into a gigantic alien space base. While traveling through it, we see Thomas passing through a colorful tunnel that makes him pass out. The scene then cuts to a scene where we see Thomas finding himself in bed. A phone rings next to him, and a fire alert occurs in the building. He rushes down to find Harriet begging Floyd not to kill her, but Floyd turns out to be shooting at everyone, this time with a real gun. Tok tries to stop it, but he soon gets dragged into the colorful tunnel still traveling through the spaceship. These are just visions he is having, 
and he again gets dragged into one of them. This time, it's an apocalyptic time zone, where he has to escape and run from zombies. He manages to find a mall to hide in with the others, but soon the zombie breaks in and starts to bite the survivors. He has other visions as well as playing a role as an abuser who gets his genitals cut off, and all the characters are being played by his patients. The hallucination stops for a while, and Tom gets a chance to see what's happening inside the giant spaceship. It is now exploding, and Thomas's shell gets thrown over into some planet's ocean, and the ship in the sky is destroyed. Thomas is clueless and heads to the shore, only to find the others also there. However, when he talks to them, they all claim to have been healed of all their addictions and traumas. It is then revealed that they all had the same visual experiences while traveling through the tunnel. Same apocalyptic visions, but different outcomes. Flyod used to be schizophrenic and severely mentally ill, but now he claims to feel clear and healthy. In the meantime, the ship continues to burn, and some parts of it are being thrown off into the land where the group is witnessing it. Shortly after, Claire also remembers herself being in a cinema watching the zombie apocalypse movie that Tom experienced. In the cinema, she takes some pills and gets expelled by the securities, and while sitting there, she realizes her addiction and confirms she doesn't want them anymore and will only be normal. Back at the present time, Claire also claims to have been healed from her addiction, and she thinks the tunnel somehow brought about a collective transformation in her life. In the meantime, they see the fragmented spaceship in the desert, and they consider approaching it. Before going, Harriet confesses she has hated men all her life and never trusted them. She has flashbacks of her childhood, where her long-lost dad forced his way into the house and somehow avenged her mother by sexually assaulting her in front of her. This has caused Harriet's traumatic experience to be triggered and finally revealed in the form of amputating Tom's genitals. As with the others, she also claims to have come to terms with her trauma and now feels healed from her grief and anger toward men. This one leaves Tom with Tom, as he hasn't told them about his experience yet. When they ask him, he diffuses the topic and insists on getting the patients home. He thinks a patient cannot be healed in an instant, which is very controversial. The trio then sadly refuses to go with him and insists on staying in their free state. Tom then rushes to the cliff to see what's beneath, and it's only a deadly ocean. The planet is still bombarded by the mini ships, and Tom decides to hop on one of them, as it can lead him to the giant spaceship in the middle of the ocean. Upon reaching its height with the help of the mini ship, Tom enters the ship and lands successfully. He has also brought the others with him, and they were made to be delivered in the shells. They all get out, and Tom gives Floyd a gun that he found on the ship. However, Shortly after, another ship comes and starts to shoot the ray at them as before. This time, they all fought and fired back at it with their weapons. Meanwhile, Tok accidentally gets shot while he is distracted talking, and he slips down. This makes him go through the visionary tunnel and he experiences his childhood once again. This time, we see the young Tomas mimicking the hero he used to see on TV. Things get disappointing as we see the flashbacks from young Tom's memory. It turns out that after he and his young brother left the garage that day, the car their dad was fixing stamped upon the father's upper body as he was fixing the leaking oil. The brother ran back to help him, but the car was too heavy for their effort. This causes the car to press against their dad's chest, causing him to die in front of his kids. This incident has caused Tom Tom to be traumatized. He finally confronts his moments, and Tom wakes up to reality. The ship has once again abducted them and placed everyone in their shells. Upon waking, Tom finds Harriet awake and confesses his experience with the group. Several times have passed in space, and the group finally sees light as the ship exposes and frees them from their shell. They are still on the giant ship, but are now free. Tom then sees planet Earth from afar and realizes he can no longer fight to go back home. Back on Earth, the news is interrogating and conversing about the mysterious ship-like things that appear in the sky. NASA has sent his astronomers to find out what it is. Soon, we will have a glimpse of space where the astronauts are trying to see what's up there. To their surprise, they found the gigantic alien spaceship hovering over Earth. Back in the city, the news announced this and cautioned everybody to stay in their house. That is when the horrific accident, a nuclear explosion, happens in half of New York, and the group sees this as far from space. They don't give much detail for now, and the scene shifts to Mandy, where she just sees the news of the explosion in Manhattan and how the city is destroyed. That is when she is bothered to check her voicemail and hears Tom's voicemail. She tries to call back, 
but immediately the city she was in gets invaded by dozens of alien ships. The government tried to bring its military all over the city, but the ships outnumbered them. They hover all over the sky and make their grand entrance to Earth. First, they arrive from space, and then on Earth, they start to shoot the ray at the people that are trying to escape. People are being abducted now, and everybody that gets shot by the ray is placed in the shell of the ship. Mandy sees this, and in the meantime, Mandy manages to hide behind a trash can and go unnoticed by the ship. This definitely looks like an alien invasion, and people on Earth are running for their lives. The ones who couldn't get away are being abducted but still kept alive. Shortly after, Tom gets a satellite signal and calls one of his friends on Earth. The satellite signal is also streaming the news that was being streamed on Earth. Soon, Tom realizes that countries have ordered a nuclear strike against all of North America, and the aliens are in fact trying to save them from the explosion. He quickly orders his friends to expose themselves to the aliens to be taken. Initially hesitant, the man agrees and informs others around him about the nuclear launch. It turns out that the human's real enemy is not another creature, but the humans themselves. The creatures are here to save the people from themselves, but they are still not welcome. So Tom thinks of another way to convince the humans to let themselves be abducted. He calls out and communicates with one of the ships to offer his aid and convince the humans to be saved. Elsewhere, Mandy is still hiding in fear for herself and the baby inside of her. She walks around the street, but shortly, a live stream in the sky appears, and it's none other than Dr. Thomas Dunn. He is using a hologram that is projected from space to inform the humans about the aliens' intention to save them from the disaster. He also tells them the nuclear war will continue between authorities, and citizens will die eventually if they stay on Earth. Upon hearing this caution and warning, the people start to expose themselves to the ships and let themselves be taken by the ray shots. However, Mandy doesn't comply with this and heads straight to the church. People gathered and confined themselves together to pass through this disaster with the help of the Lord instead of the aliens. Mandy saw this and wasn't really comforted, so she went to Rebecca's grave. There, she receives a call from Tom. He begs her to come to him, as he is just above the sky waiting for her but she sadly refuses to stay with her daughter. While the explosion takes the rest of the northern part, and Mandy gets dissolved in the process, Tom hears her last words, and she dies. The movie comes to a close as the alien ships keep the thousands of people on Earth in the shell until they find them a new home. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.